On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the Megalodon in terms of its monstrosity? Well, hold on, because I've got something even more terrifying for you. You see, the Mariana Trench isn't really empty. Yeah, in the deepest part of the ocean, there's a whole bunch of monsters lurking down there. And imagine if one day they just decide to pop up. Trust me, after watching this, you'll think twice about going for a deep sea swim. Imagine the vast and mysterious Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the world's oceans. Stretching down into the abyss is a place where darkness reigns and pressure is so intense that it could crush a submarine like a soda can. Now, imagine if the creatures lurking in those depths suddenly rose to the surface. Just think about it, the Mariana Trench is like an alien world hidden beneath our very own oceans. We've only scratched the surface of what lies beneath, but what if that surface was breached? What if these enigmatic creatures decided to pay us a visit? Hold on tight because we're about to dive into the unknown. We're not talking about your ordinary sea creatures here. We're talking about creatures that could be straight out of a sci-fi movie. Let's take a look at some of them. First up, we have the Fangtooth. Its appearance is nothing short of monstrous, with long, needle-like teeth protruding from its grotesque mouth. The Fangtooth is a creature that holds horror and fascination. Despite being small in size, measuring only a few inches, its jaws are disproportionately large, armed with dagger-like teeth that are the largest in relation to body size among all fish species. These ferocious fangs are perfectly designed for capturing and gripping prey in the abysmal darkness, where food is scarce and competition is fierce. Imagine being a small fish or crustacean innocently swimming through the deep waters, when suddenly the fang tooth strikes with lightning speed. Its jaw hinges open and those wickedly sharp teeth close in, securing its meal in an instant. It's a quick and brutal ambush, but let's not stop at its fearsome appearance and predatory skills. The Fangtooth also possesses an astounding ability to withstand the immense pressure of the deep sea. As we descend deep into the trench, the water above exerts an unimaginable weight upon us. Yet the Fangtooth, with its specialized adaptions, has managed to adapt and endure these crushing forces. Its body is compact and sturdy, with scales that provide an added layer of protection. It's like wearing armor designed specifically for this hostile environment. Next up, we have the Dumbo Octopus. Named after the lovable Disney character, this thing is seriously a true marvel of nature. It belongs to the genus Grimpotuthis, and while there are different species within this group, they all share some common characteristics. These incredible creatures have small, rounded bodies and are typically around the size of a football. Their most distinctive feature, of course, is their ear-like fins which they use to gracefully glide through the water, resembling a flying elephant in the deep. But don't be fooled by their cute appearance. These little cephalopods are skilled predators. With their soft bodies and lack of an internal or external skeleton, they can squeeze through the tiniest of cracks and crevices in search of their prey. Their diet consists mainly of small crustaceans, worms, and other deep-sea invertebrates, which they capture using their eight tentacles. But what really sets the Dumbo octopus apart from other cephalopods is its habitat. These creatures call the Mariana Trench their home, dwelling at depths of up to 13,000 feet below the surface. In this extreme environment, where the pressure is over a thousand times greater than at sea level, the Dumbo octopus, as if evolved to thrive. Next we jump across the Sea Devil Anglerfish. This creature is straight out of your wildest nightmares. Imagine a creature with a head that looks like it belongs on an alien planet, complete with razor sharp teeth and bulging haunting eyes. This thing blends seamlessly into the darkness with its pitch black skin. But what truly sets the Sea Devil apart is the luminous lure that dangles from its forehead, like a tiny bioluminescent lantern. This mesmerizing beacon serves two purposes, attracting unsuspecting prey and enticing potential mates. Now, let's dive deeper. As we dive into the abyssal plains of the Mariana Trench, we'll discover that this creature is far more than meets the eye. It's a fascinating case of extreme sexual dimorphism, where the females dwarf their male counterparts. These males are much smaller, almost parasitic in nature. Once they find a female, they latch onto her body, fusing their tissues together and becoming essentially a permanent part of her. Anyway, let's move on to the goblin shark. You see, unlike the anglerfish, this one had got a long, slender body and grotesque appearance. It looks like as if it's strayed out of a nightmare. Its most distinguishing feature is its extendable jaw, 
claw that shoots out like a harpoon, snatching up unsuspecting prey in the blink of an eye. Trust me, you wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that. But here's the thing, this monster of the deep is a true marvel. Despite its eerie appearance, the goblin shark is a master of adaption. Its skin is a pale pink hue, allowing it to blend seamlessly with the surrounding darkness. It possesses highly sensitive ampullae of Lorenzini, electroreceptive organs that help it detect the faintest electrical signals given off by its prey. The goblin shark prefers to stalk its victims lurking in the shadows before striking with lightning speed. Now, imagine being a small fish, minding your own business in the inky blackness of the ocean. You never see it coming. One moment you're swimming peacefully and the next, you're trapped in the jaws of the goblin shark. It's like a real-life horror movie unfolding right before your eyes. But don't worry, the goblin shark isn't interested in humans. In fact, it's a rather elusive creature that rarely comes into contact with us. It prefers to dwell in the depths, far away from the prying eyes of humans. But I don't know if that's the case, if it plans on moving up. What do you think, huh? And meanwhile, these are just one of the very few creatures down there. I mean, we don't even have a complete list of what's down there. So, in the end, let's just hope that they don't ever pop up towards the top. Anyway, do drop your thoughts in the comments section below. We'll be back in another episode soon. Until then, stay tuned for more stories.